In the name of the living and loving God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Trinity Sunday, and it's all about building community through the work of the Trinity. Let's take that gospel image. I mean, again, for the past five weeks, been, we've been looking at the farewell discourse in the Gospel according to John, and there's some repetition in what he's saying, but this is the final segment, and next Sunday we go to the Gospel according to Luke. But in today's, in today's Gospel message, um, John has Jesus talking about the Trinity. Jesus talks about himself. Jesus talks about the Father. Jesus talks about the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and the setting in which he is doing this is important. <coughs> this is, in John's version, um, this is at the Last Supper. So it's a, very, it's a very significant time for those disciples, for those apostles, those 12 who became 11. Um, before he says this to them, the bread, this is my body, has been passed. The wine, this is my blood, has been passed. Feet have been washed. Judas Iscariot has gone away. Jesus has said, I will be betrayed. A lot has happened. And so Jesus says to them, there's more I want to tell you, but you can't, you can't hear it right now. But he goes on to say what the role of the Spirit will be and what the role of the Father will be in relation to Jesus. So you see, there he is in this reading talking about building community at a very critical time through the work of the Trinity. This is the only feast day in the life of the church that is based on or named after a doctrinal position, the central doctrinal statement in our faith, that is, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so it's different than one of those feast days, usually based on the life of Jesus or the formation of the church, like last Sunday. Um, and and it's, sort of, it's sort of different to be talking about a doctrine, but it's really more than that. Uh, you know that the Nicene Creed was formed 400 years after what we hear Jesus saying. And the purpose of coming up with the creed was to say, okay, this is what we stand for, we Christians. Because there were a lot of other ideas floating around the world at that time. Some people were saying, well, Jesus wasn't really God. He was just an amazing human being, wise, loving, nobody as good as that. There were other people saying, well, Jesus wasn't, Jesus wasn't really human. He was really God sort of in the image of a human. And um, that wasn't orthodox theology at all. It was, you know, the truth is that Jesus was fully human and fully divine. So there were lots of areas and, and people fought for 400 years over what exactly do we stand for. And so it was important to have a creed. So here it is. Um, we're going to stick with this. This is Orthodox Christianity. So it sort of was a, it was a clarifying statement. It sort of was a head thing, you know. But you, you know, it wasn't just getting it straight, what we believe. It was, in fact, building community. Because when everybody says, this is sort of the boat that we're sitting in and sailing in, that builds community when there's clarity over what ties us together. As a matter of fact, when we say this Nicene Creed every Sunday, we say we believe. And just the fact that all of us standing together and saying the same words, I think that probably goes, takes a few steps towards building community through the work of the Trinity. Going back to that gospel image in the, that, we, that you just heard, um, 
Jesus goes on in chapter 17, that's the chapter after what we heard, to, to pray to God the Father for not only the, the 11 apostles, the 11 and those who had been with Jesus, but also for the developing faith, faithful community. He prayed for, ask the Father to, to guard, to protect those who had chosen to follow him because again, it was clear that there would be some tough times in the future as people were called to live into a Christian life, praying for the entire faith community. He was speaking to that faith community and then praying for that community. It's all about building community through the work of the Trinity. And then comes that powerful reading from Romans when St. Paul does the same thing. He is speaking to the church in Rome primarily, but then also to us, and naming the three elements, the three persons of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of one substance, Godhead. And Paul says, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. You hear the same thing? He's talking about building up the people of God and names all three persons of the Trinity. It's part of our history. It's at the core of our faith. I guess it was a half a century ago that Martin Luther King started talking about the beloved community. And it's sort of the same thing. I mean, he's talking as a person of faith about community, about people living together with each other in a way that, that, that is nonviolent, that is respectful, that is sensitive, that is hopeful, that is courageous to step into a more just world. And here, here at St. James, we talk about a community of love. Um, sometimes it has more to do with the way we care for each other, but still it's being built on that belief that God is with us and touching our hearts as we touch each other's hearts and support them as we all grow in love. And here we are. Here we are in worship. And as I said a minute ago, this is a time when we experience God in, what, in various ways, maybe, but it's all about building up the body of Christ, which we call church. In my announcement, I referred to the fact that that's sort of going to be, no, that is going to be one focus of this summer. What can we do by being led by the Trinity to build up this community even more? We're going to be looking at new members and commitment when the bishop is here and ways that we can be in connection with other people and have more time in coffee hour to enjoy each other. That's sort of a theme for this summer. So I ask you, I ask you, for the next two minutes of silence, two full minutes of silence, to consider these two questions. How are we now being guided by the triune God? What do you sense right now at St. James? as evidence that we're being guided by the triune God. And the other question is, how might we be more open to the guidance 
of the Trinity as we build a holy community? How might we be more open to the guidance of the Trinity as we build community?